looks like it may rain at any minute, so don't know how long this is going to go for. I did something off camera. I meant to do it on camera, but I didn't realize how easy it was going to be, so I ended up doing it off camera. So I cut this out, a piece of paper. Uh, it's a skeg ox with, uh, yeah, like a broken handle or something on it. And then what I did, I laid that down over a piece of 3mm timber, drew around the edge of it, so that was my template for drawing it, and then I took it to the bandsaw and just started cutting a bit of the timber off, and then I was going to do the rest of it with a jeweler's saw, but it ended up being pretty easy to do on the bandsaw, so I've come up with this. Um, yeah, 3mm thick. There it is. It was pretty easy to do, just a little bit of sanding at the end, but uh, yeah, now it's the, the bandsaw I've got, the blade's a bit thick, it's 10mm thick, it's not really designed for doing small like curves, but I just kept yeah, chipping away at it and we got there. So the, what that's for is this is my cover for my um, internals. So this would be the cover plate, it's going to go, go like that, or it's going to like that, yeah, I think it's going to go that way. It's going to go something like that. So I'm going to trace around this now, and then I'm going to uh, carve in 3mm deep into the body, so that this fits in and will be flush with the rest of it. It's not going to sit on the top, it's actually going to be flush. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to hold it on with screws or magnets yet, I don't know. But I just sort of be different, rather than just having some shape to cover up the hole, I just sort of be interested to have an actual design that covers up the hole. I haven't seen anyone do it before, but then maybe I haven't been looking in the right places. Anyway, so we're going to do that now and see how it goes. So my intention is to set my router at 3mm depth and just route most of this. But I'm worried about like big chunks chipping out into the rest of the body. So I'm going to go over it with my fine my BSK. So yeah, by cutting these cross fibres I'm hoping that it will prevent the chip out. Okay, so I just uh, need neaten this up a little bit as well with the router, and so we've got 
most of it cut out. We didn't get any chip out that I can see so far, which is great. So that tracing along really helped. And I think the fact that uh, it was a fairly high quality router bit and we're only going three mils deep, I think that helped a lot as well. But yeah, I'm, I did think I probably would get some chip out, but I think this method of cutting with the knife first really does make a difference. So I just got to neaten it up now with some chisels. Okay, is finished, or as finished as I'm going to get it anyway. Um, it doesn't sit completely flush, it's slightly proud, um, maybe a half a mil proud. I could try and scrape the whole thing back half a mil, but I had that much trouble just getting it to sit in there. Unfortunately, when you, like I was using the chisel to chisel these edges back, and you know it's a bit rough and if you don't if you have to, one even tiny speck of timber there it lifts everything up and you've got to keep scraping and as you can see there's a bit of a gap I think the better way to do it would to be to actually cut the body first or make this slightly oversized cut the body to the right size and then sand this back to being the right shape because by sanding these edges, you keep the edges of this smooth, which they are now, and they're smooth. And you would still have smooth edges on here. As it is, because you're kind of chipping away at the edges, because you can't just sand it back, or I can't anyway. Uh, yeah, it ended up really rough. I haven't sanded it yet. Once I sanded it, it might come out a little better. I'm not going to put screws in it yet to hold it down, because... I'm going to leave it off while I'm doing the rest of the build because this will just get damaged anyway. So I've just been using this half inch round over bit on the router to uh, just sort of make a comfort edge along the top edge here where it contacts my chest. I um, didn't video it, sorry. Now I'm thinking about just doing a very fine router bit, round over bit just to sort of blend this sort of carving in here with the rest of it. And I'll probably just go around, all around the whole body with that. I'm thinking about maybe using the half inch stone in this section here to try and cover up a bit of this chip out with a round over. Just trying to get that smooth rather than a big dish on the exit point. Same with the entry point here, but I've still got a dish on it. It's quite, well, it's really hard to do on corners to get a smooth exit. I had another go at it, but I'm potentially um, making it worse now. So I'll just use this uh, smaller router bit here, blend it in a little bit, and then I'll just hand sand it will be the best way to do it. I've now fitted a I think it's a six millimeter round over bit. It's just a bit smaller than a quarter inch. So I'll just do the rest of the guitar with that. So dear viewers, I find myself in a dilemma. I had this big bit of chip out here when I was routing the sides here. 
Now, I want to actually round this over, this section from here to here, because it's where my arm goes when I'm playing. So just for ergonomic reasons, I just want to round this bit over with this router bit here. But, as you can see, the router bit's going to be about that height. The wheel of the router bit, this wheel here, is going to run through about here. Which is going to cause this router bit to dip in. And then we're going to get sort of like, well, it's going to match that. We're going to have a straight line here instead of a curve. Uh, which is terrible. So. Uh, I could try filling this in with a piece of timber. Which would probably be the best solution, like glue a piece in and then reshape it. We're using some of this timber, which is the same timber I used around here when I blocked it out. It's very, very soft pine. I got on the band, so I just cut a sl slither off the side of it, and then I just sort of cut it down and came back and test fitted it a couple of times. So this should be about right now. Trying to make sure I get some under the lip here. So it sticks onto that top surface. Uh, I'm probably it's probably not going to stick in the middle here because it's a bit concave. And I don't think my bit I cut out is going to touch it. So the most important place for the glue is on the edges. It's probably where I'm going to get the most contact. Alright, so let's make sure we've got this all coated. Alright. goes that way around I believe. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my fingers. I think that's in the right position. Put it on the end of the clamp, a bit of paper. I'll tidy that up a bit more when I actually do the final sanding around the sides here. It's, uh, it's perhaps slightly proud of this. It's good here. I might give it a little bit more of a sand just to get the lids a little bit. I can feel it just here. This merges in fairly well. Yeah, it's not too bad. Hi, Cameron here. Thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to Cheapskate, and have fun.